The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the March 29th, terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure that you and I have an extraordinary one. And of course, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us today. You and I, we get to go look at the circumstances of the bulls and the bears, the buyers and the sellers. We're going to go figure out why they are interpreting what Janet Yellen is uh, communicating. She is at a uh, luncheon uh, making everybody throw up, I think. Maybe they aren't serving very good food. But we're serving good food here at uh, TFNN. And I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. And more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Dial on in at 877-927-6648. Internationally, 727-445-1044. So let's get this terrific Tuesday, maybe turnaround Tuesday show, off to the races. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got the Dow traded up about 37 points at 17,572. S&P is up 6 at 2,043. NASDAQ composite up 42 points. It's a good move here. It's trading out at 4,809. Russell 2000 also having a nice move. It's up 12 points, trading at 10,92. Gold is trading up $15, trading at 1,237. Silver is basically on chain. It's up 7 pennies, trading at 15,26. Light speed crude back a buck 19 right now, trading at 38,20. Lead the charge here to the upside, the opposite of yesterday to the downside. Dollar wise, it is price line up 16 bucks. It's about 1% intuitive surgical brain salad surgery. That's up 2%, up about 13 bucks. Uh, Amazon is up about $13 as well. Uh, Google's up eight. Uh, so you've got a lot of the movers and the shakers inside the uh, NASDAQ, inside the NDX 100, moving to the upside to the downside. One of those that is not moving to the upside is Chipotle, down about 20 bucks, off 4%. Puma Biotech, down 25%. That's off $8 and change. Uh, Synex Corp, down 7.5%, 7 bucks. GW Pharma, off uh, 3 bucks. Cons Inc., off 4 as well. So, Let's get into it. Let's first address the uh, first email of the day that came in and asked if I would take a look at gold and Janet Yellen's response to the market's response to, you know, Janet Yellen's uh, comment. So over the past um, half hour, 45 minutes, we've seen some fairly decent moves inside these markets, to say the least. Inside gold, we've seen a move. Uh, well, let's go take a look at what we've actually seen here. Let's just do this. Let's take the gold contract. Let's put it on a 10-minute chart. There we go. We'll just put it on a 10-minute chart. We'll go ahead and punch it up on the screen. Oh, uh, probably didn't want to do well. That's okay. It's got these profiles that are that are making it. But here's a 10-minute chart. You can see the first move that came right here. This is at 9 o'clock this morning. So a pretty decent move at 9. But uh, a lot of that game was given back here by 940, so 40 minutes later. Now, at this stage of the game, a nice wide-ranging bar here between 1220 and 1230. A little bit more of an extension of the gain out here uh, uh, during the 1230, 1240 level. So we've seen price pull back. But what's really going on? Who's buying and who's selling? That's really the question, isn't it? Let's go answer that question. At least let's answer that question as of last Tuesday, where we can take a look at the commitment of traders data, the CFTC data that is produced each Friday, with the exception of a holiday. So it came out yesterday. And uh, let's go see who is likely buying and who is selling. It's really pretty simple. If we take a look at this data, uh, you're looking at the uh, top portion of the chart happens to be the gold contract, the weekly gold contract. The next level, we'll call it really panel two out there. It's the group of traders that really represent uh, folks like you and I. The CFTC calls us non-reportables, meaning that we're so small that eh, we do have our own category, but not the category like if you were the big money trader, sometimes presumed to be the smart money. Those are called the commercial traders out here. 
And as we take a look at it, what we can see is as of last Tuesday, the folks that were buying into any moves higher were the non-reportables, the small individual traders. What was the presumed smart money doing when it comes to gold? They were moving to more net short positions out here as a percentage of open interest. They're at levels. They have been at levels out here inside of uh, gold where they are just, they are loving Janet Yellen. They're saying, we get to sell more. Keep coming. Keep firing away, all you buyers. That is how I interpret the chart. If we take a look at it, and the reason why we interpret it this way is because of past information. Of course, we put this, it's not a timing tool. Yesterday, you and I spent time with regard to the timing aspect, and we're taking a look at this as more of a, from a day time frame, intermediate, daily to intermediate time frame with regard to what uh, gold is doing. So that's what the, the, the smart money, the big money out there, they are the ones that are selling into this rally out here. Now, when does it uh, change? When does it say, hey, even, and they have, uh, they've got a big boat, so they can build these positions over a longer period of time. So we really can't use them as a uh, timing tool. I would have to, uh, I'm not going to, I don't have that chart up here on my screen right now. But, um, and that was really what we looked at yesterday. You can go get the archive of yesterday's show. Why don't you do that? That way it frees us up from being able to uh, take a look at it. I would say, though, as we take a look at the uh, current gold contract, the uh, June contract out here, uh, let me put the uh, daily back on my screen. I would start to say, well, from the short side of the trade, the level you want to be watching, and that is right now as of 112 in the afternoon. This will change it for clock, but it'll be right around this area. Uh, if you were to see gold somehow today close above, we'll call it 1258, 1259, we'll call it, let's call it 1260. If you see it close above uh, 1260 out here, then the forecast I'm giving you, the ship is not ready to turn. But if you don't see that, it is the large commercial traders that are selling into this so-called rally, and they have been doing it for weeks and weeks and weeks. And that is why gold hasn't really gone anywhere other than this real consolidation level up here at the high. So that is what is going on when we take a look at the uh, at gold. Now, this is irrespective of the mining sector, just simply the metals out here. Maybe it's a reason why silver is basically doing nada. Not a darn thing out here. If you take a look at uh, silver trading at 1524, you got basically a doji candle out here. It's not really doing uh, anything worth even spending some time on. So we won't do that. Now, let's take a look at the market itself. Let's take a look at the um, let's take a look at the uh, equity futures indices. Let's take a look at the uh, daily contracts. The numbers that I'm going to have you write down, these will change just slightly. But the levels of resistance that we want to be watching inside the ES Mini, you're looking at about 2030, we'll call it 2035. 2034. Uh, if the ES Mini closes below 2035, all we've seen today is a test of a resistance level. Inside the NQ, now the NQ has got more strength than it, just as the, the Dow's got a bit of strength too, but the NQ, the number, is uh, 4390, we'll call it 4395. You're at 4435 right now. So if this becomes Turnaround Tuesday, gives back those gains out there, the number you want to be watching is 4395. So we'll take a look at a couple of other numbers out here and answer any questions that you might have. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com.
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Steve, take your phone calls now. 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 Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 51, SP's up about 9, NASDAQ composite up 49. So before we went to that break, we are taking a look at some numbers to pay attention to in the equity uh, futures uh, contract uh, market. So 2034, 2035 is the number inside the ES Mini, 4395, the number inside the NQ, inside the Dow, the number to be paying attention to is 17,453. What does it mean if prices close below those levels versus above? If prices close above those levels, it says that the uh, buyers are in control and prices can easily move move to the higher level. If prices are below those areas, it says they've already been turning down, they have been turning down, uh, and that, uh, and that well, they've, they've been slightly turning down. The NQ, no, it hasn't. But uh, it would say that uh, even though it would be very subtle, that we're starting to see that uh, top form inside the markets. But you close back above those areas that I gave you, says you've got more room to run to the upside. How much more to the upside out here? That's an excellent question. And to answer that, yesterday we were taking a look at, uh, from a longer term perspective, we were taking a look at some of those horizontal trading ranges. So let's go back and refresh our mind about that. That would be by taking a look at, where are we at here? Uh, uh, there we go. The S and P right here. Oh, this is you know, we got the NDX one. Hey, why don't we keep the NDX one hundred up here? Because the NDX is the one that's strong. We'll take a look at some of those components, see how they're trading, see what kind of volume, see if they're coming into swings and so forth. But inside the actual NDX one hundred, the key level of resistance. Now, this is a weekly time frame that we're taking a look at. Uh, the horizontal line is going to cross my screen. Blue happen to represent the daily horizontal trading ranges. Green uh, represent the weekly, and red represent the uh, monthly numbers. These typically act as levels of support or resistance, like in any kind of uh, uh, charting that you might do out here. When you identify resistance, if you close above it, old resistance becomes what? New support. Likewise, when you break support, old support becomes new resistance. In this case here, you've got the NDX 100 trading at 44.46. And at 44.40, so just six points higher, happens to be your weekly horizontal trading range boundary number. Now, this is going to have more meaning on Friday than it does on Tuesday at 120, but you can see you're trading right into resistance. However, 
You clear this level. You close above 4440. There's actually no reason for the NDX 100 to not be able to run up to the 4602 level. So that's what's going on there. Let's take a look at the S&P 500 as well, SPX. We'll go ahead and put that in here. Again, we'll take a look at what pops up on our screen is daily, weekly. So in the S&P 500, we were looking at the ES Mini. I think that was a question. How high will it go? Well, if we go ahead and convert that over and take a look at the S&P 500, the answer is going to be not that much higher. You can see, in this case here, we have both a daily and a weekly level of resistance that the S&P is running into. The weekly happens to be 2,048.50, basically. You're trading at 2,045.80. So we're really not even up to the weekly level of resistance. And then just slightly above that, you've got a daily horizontal trading range number. That is held as resistance. It did last week. Uh, it may again this week. That number is 2,058. You get above that, you've got another 30 points to the upside. That would be the 2,087. What am I saying? I'm saying that markets are trading up against resistance, even though, Janet Yellen, I was going to give you a pop quiz out there. I really wanted to for all of you that are listening to her speech out there. But the problem was I couldn't understand uh, hardly anything that she said. She talked out of this side of the mouth, that's the right side, and then right after that, the left side of the mark, uh, mouth. Uh, all the risks are not to the downside is what I heard her say. Okay, and there's risk to the upside? Uh, what the heck does the... Hey, tell me what that means out here. What's the risk of the market going... Anyways, uh, and then I think I heard her say that she was using some kind of data from the University of Michigan, and then I think I heard her, because they're data independent, and it had to be within at least a two-minute uh, span out there, and then I thought I heard her say that the data from the University of Michigan, in a polite way, uh, wasn't reliable. So what data? I, I know the data that's reliable. We'll just simply come back here and take a look at our old technical analysis chart to determine what is going on inside the market. So that's with regard to the S&P 500 and the NDX. Let's go take a look at individually some of the stocks inside of the NDX 100, see how they're doing. So let's go take a look at the uh, current weighting structure in here. Let's do that by taking a look at the uh, QQQ ETF. That's going to give us the top 10 weightings inside the NDX. So you've got Apple at 11.5%. Microsoft is about uh, eight and three tenths. Amazon is five. Facebook's five. Google is really nine percent, but they've got it broken down into the two share classes out there. Intel about three. So Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook. Let's go see what Apple is uh, doing. In the case of Apple, right now trading at uh, one oh seven seventeen, up a buck ninety eight. Let's go see what this is running into. Let's take a look at both the prior swing point. Let's take a look at some Taz market profiles. Let's figure out to the upside, to the downside. Let's take a look at the risk to the upside out there. What the heck? is the risk to the upside. And then even, we can see right now, volume-wise, you've got uh, 18 million shares today. Now, the last time that Apple was up at this area, this level, was just about four or five trading sessions ago on March 21st. And there, you had 35 million shares. So what we know about Apple, because we've been trading now for four hours, there's only six and a half left in the day out here, that Apple is up into its previous swing point with light volume. Talk about light volume. How about yesterday? 13 million shares inside the QQQ ETF. So you've got Apple moving into a swing point. Maybe it takes it out. The high, by the way, there is 107.65. But we can see you've got Apple trading right into a its daily resistance of its TAS market profile of 106.90. Yes, you're trading above that. You're trading right now at uh, at uh, 107.19. You know, if, you, if, if there were volume behind the move, if there were volume and it took out the 107.65 level, it, it would say you could move up to 119. You know, on this light volume, I don't know. if And it, right now, it's not even above that level. But that's what's going on with Apple, which is, what, 11.3% or so of the uh, Qs out here. Let's take a look at uh, uh, Microsoft, MM, MS, MSFT, Microsoft out here. Let's take a look at that and then Facebook. So in the case of Microsoft, it's trading into, you know, a swing point area that has, it had a, really a gap down. So let's do this. Let's first take a look at the market profiles, and we'll go ahead and we'll turn those off, and then we'll just simply take a look at the level of resistance that it's trading into. So with regard to pièce de résistance, you can see both a, a daily and a weekly market profile high is not that much further above where it's trading. Right now you're trading at 54.62, and the top level out here of resistance is going to be 54.98 on the weekly, $55 even 
even Stephen on the daily. So we know 55 bucks is a strong level of resistance. Uh, doesn't mean that it can't overtake it. Let's go see what it's doing volume-wise here and uh, understand that metric. We'll turn off our market profiles. We can see that Microsoft had gapped down back on the trading day of February 2nd with 56 million shares. Holy schmoly out here. So this thing gapped down with 56 million shares, and today you're at 11 million shares. There ain't no way. And if we take a look at the uh, most recent time that we were up here and then back down was on the trading day of March 18th, 67 million shares. So we know that Microsoft, not that it can't run into that $55 level, but it, number two waiting inside of the uh, queues here is uh, got no energy or energy emphasis behind it. Let's go take a look at Facebook. We got the FB. Let's go see what it's trying to trade into. Let's go turn on our profiles, get a feel for what's going on horizontal hidden levels. Of course, they're not hidden here at TFN. So we'll do that when we get back from this break. But it does look like Facebook wants to try to make a move to the 117 level. 18 million shares today going into 60 million shares. Yeah. A lot of those uh, non-reportables buying gold, they must be buying the market as well. Steve Roach with TFNN. We'll be right back. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video tiger tv exclusively at tfnn.com this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information just click the think or swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 43. S&P is up uh, eight points. So before we went to that break, we were taking a look at Facebook. So let's go ahead and pull that up on the screen. We're just going to take a look at the top five holdings with inside the NDX 100, get a feel for what they're doing. We've already taken a look at uh, Apple. 
We took a look at Apple and Microsoft, both moving higher with really light volume into areas of resistance. They can still move a bit higher, but certainly moving into those levels with resistance. Uh, when we took a look at Facebook, the same thing, 18 million shares is moving into its most recent swing point here from February the 2nd, it had about 60 million shares. Nonetheless, uh, this seems uh, destined because uh, yesterday it closed inside that swing point, the bottom of which is uh, 113.20. And yesterday you did volume of uh, 21 million shares. So you got a little bit more volume today. It looks to me like Facebook is going to make a stretch all the way to the 117.59 level um, and where it finds resistance and, uh, you know, potentially a, uh, part of a consolidation uh, pattern, double top if you can take out the swing point low from February 9th out here. But that was Facebook. Let's take a look at Amazon. AMZN out here. And Amazon today is uh, up uh, trading out at the uh, 592 level with volume of about 2.5 million shares. And really, it is. Uh, so, if we were to take a look at just its TAS profiles, we can see it cleared several days ago. It's above the uh, daily high out here, which should become support 569. And you'd say, hey, free ride all the way up to the uh, 65195 uh, level. But let's go ahead and turn those profiles off and go take a look at what else. Uh, this might be trading into in the case of Amazon. And here's what we know in the case of Amazon. Well, first, first thing to take a look at is what is it doing compared to its most recent swing point? And that's going to take us back to March 2nd. That had 4.5 million shares. You're at 2.5 right now. So chances are, if we do, if we did the straight line math on it, you're above that swing point with light volume. Does that mean that you can't go higher? Of course not. But it doesn't give you a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. Therefore, what else is Amazon trading into? Well, you can see that this gap down right here in the trading session of January 29th. And it's really running right into that gap down. There's a slight little window uh, that is open there from the two gaps, the low of the session from the trading day of January 28th and the high of the session from January 29th. So at 5, well, what is that, 593 to uh, 597.55 really is a resistance level. If it can close above 597.55, even if it does on lighter volume, says that it can go ahead and make a run for that January 28th swing point high of 638. But right now, it's running into resistance as well, doing it with lighter volume. You will, you will see what it does, but it's not likely. There's no conviction behind the move, that is for sure. Um, and that's what's going on with Amazon. Let's go ahead and finish this up and take a look at uh, Google. We'll just take a look at GOOG out here, see what it is doing. Uh, you're trading out right now at 743.33, a million shares behind this move. Last time it was up here was a couple of days ago with about 1.4 million shares. So maybe that's got similar type volume, but big, huge downdraft that it's really trading into is 6 million shares back here on February the uh, 3rd. But let's see, do we have a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside inside of Google? We're looking at the swing point, or I'm looking at from the swing point from March 2nd at 1.6 million shares, and price passed it with 1.9. So we know in the case of uh, Google, I, uh, let me go ahead and add this study to the chart. Uh, I accidentally deleted something. I mean, I have to start over from scratch again and add all my indicators. There we go. So let's go ahead and add the A to B equals C. There we go. You already had it in there. So you've, what, what uh, Google is doing actually is completing a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD to the upside. Oh, very, inter very interesting. Would say Schultz. No, it wasn't Schultz. Yeah, I think that was Colonel Klink. So what you've got going on inside of uh, Google here looks like you've got a Gertley sell pattern. You do. So what Google is doing is trading right into the 0.618 retrace per level. It uh, completed 1 to 1 A to B equals CD, which, by the way, if it can take out the high here from this key reversal session, so you got a bearish reversal candle. That formed on March 23rd. That high out there is uh, 745.72. That's the key number to be watching because if price can get above that, you go up to the next level. You take it to the next level, which would be in the 762 to 720, 757 level. Um, but right now, really running right into to resistance. So that takes a look at just simply by taking a look at those five equities out here. What we were doing was taking a look at uh, weighting wise. Let's go add them up. So you did about uh, 12 and 8 is 20, 30 plus uh, 35, 35 to 40%, really 35 to 40%, we'll say 40% by just really looking at those five equities out here to get a gauge as to what's going on inside of the queues. Now, why were we looking at that? Well, we really were looking at that because of the NQ. And if I take a look at the NDX 100 itself right now, which is the one that has the most steam, the NDX 100 uh, is, uh, even though light volume, 
as long as it closes above 4402 today, uh, buyers are in control. Uh, you know, and it says that you can move to higher ground out here. But we can see that that higher ground, as Janet Yellen so eloquently said, there's risks to the upside. Maybe she knew that, maybe she's listening to this show out here. Maybe that's it. I did not give her credit for that because there are risks to the upside. And we just took a look at them, right? You got those risks of resistance inside of certainly the QQQ ETF out there. So that is uh, the market's take on what's going on by just looking at those uh, charts and those uh, tools out there. Okay, so we've covered that which is basically the cues out here. We take a look at gold. We've taken a look at, we haven't looked at any currencies out here. I got 10 minute delays on this, but let's go take a look at them, see how they've responded. You've got the uh, US dollar index back 630 ticks on uh, my screen, trading out at 95, uh, 30. Of course, you know, my preference is really to look at the currency pairs, which make up the US dollar index to get a feel for what's going on out here. Um, and, uh, you know, trading into, it looks like it's going to head back all the way down to the swing point for March 18th out here, somewhere between 94.60 and 95.19. Let's go look at the uh, euro uh, versus the US dollar. Again, you've got a 15 minute delay here. And, uh, you know, really the same message. It's trading into the uh, swing points from the trading days of March 17th and March 18th. And so we can see that this level here has really acted as resistance. So looks like it wants to move higher. If this moves higher, the US dollar index does what? It pulls back, one of the components, the largest weighting. So it should uh, pull back. Can we take a look at what's going on inside of the Great British Pound? That's trading out at 143 and uh, about the 143 area. Uh, this too looks like it may be headed, let me, let me just add this up, a buck 42, yeah, buck 42. As long as it continues to trade above 1.425, then uh, no reason for this not to go ahead and trade up into the March 18th swing point area between 144.11 and 145.15. So as this goes higher, the U.S. index does what? It goes ahead and moves lower out there. So it looks like the, you know, just confirming what we looked at. And if we take a look at the uh, Japanese yen out here, just to complete, even though yeah, probably the uh, Canadians, and hey, I'm originally from Detroit, so I really should give Canada, I ought to put the Canadian dollar up on the screen out here and see what the loonie is uh, doing. But as we take a look at the uh, Japanese yen, what do we have out here? We can say about the 112, as long as it can trade underneath about 112, and you're at 112.87. So in the case of the Japanese yen, we're not getting that same message here that this wants to uh, get stronger by moving lower. Therefore, that would go ahead and put weakness inside the U.S. dollar. So at this stage of the game, the uh, Japanese yen is the uh, holdout here. But if it were to close below right now, 112 even, Steve, and you're trading at 112.85 right now, then the message would be different and say, hey, it wants to get a bit strong. We've got the Dow up 41, S&P's up 7, NASDAQ composite up 46. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed 
Lift has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 52. S&P is up by eight points out here. Um, let's go take a look at the daily charts here for the ES and the NQ. In the case of the NQ, you know, we've, we've taken a look at it. We know it's moving higher with light volume out there. When we took a look at the, well, we, we just simply know that by taking a look at 40% of the weighting inside of that by looking at those five individual stocks. So what the NQ, though, did here uh, during the last uh, 15 or 20 minutes, it got to a slightly higher high. So it took out our seventh inning stretch uh, candle out here. And so the question that uh, really came on my screen is where where's the upside target? inside of the NQ out here? Well, you'd have to say, first first the key level is going to be, you see you've got an A to B, you get basically have a one-to-one -one A to B equal CD that has completed. Not exactly, but close. 44.56 of that would actually be that number out here. Let me get my crosshair going. But you can see that as the uh, NQ is moving up to that level, uh, on the trading session of March 23rd, it created that little bearish engulfing that candle out here. So resistance uh, inside of the NQ is really the high of that level, which is 44.41 and a quarter. And you are at 44.39 right now. So any close above 44.41 and a quarter says that uh, price will head to the 44.56 area to complete the exact uh, one to one A to B equals CD. If it gets above that, then what is game is 45.57. That's the uh, daily chart for the NQ. That was really one of the first uh, potential, and it's still in place here with regard to reversal signals. I don't care whether it's a, uh, taking out that seventh wave move or not out here. Let me do one uh, other thing. I don't think we have a, no, we don't have any any price relative strength diversion top out here as we did at the bottom. So that's a daily chart for the NQ. The daily chart here for the ES, maybe this is what's going on out here. We can see that it's uh, quite a ways away, and uh, quite a ways, but it's certainly away from the most recent high where you did have a reversal signal at the completion of a, a little bit more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD to the upside. That was on March the 23rd, but it's the March 22nd candle that becomes the uh, level of resistance, and that is priced out at 2047.50. If price can get above that, then you're looking at a 100% move of a move, getting back into the swing point levels from December the 17th, which is right around the 2063 area. 2066 would be your 1 to 2 A to B equals C to the upside, but it just doesn't have its oomph in here. It doesn't have its heart in it as we take a look at the ES Mini, at least as of 144 in the afternoon. Another question that popped up said, would I take a look at Light Sweet Crude? And the answer is, of course I will. We'll take a look at Light Sweet Crude, trade out at 3829, uh, back about a buck 10 right now. So as we look at uh, this, let's try to get a feel for where it's going going gone let's go ahead and add our market profiles both our daily and our weekly we do have a, at least i have a brand new weekly profile out here so this is pretty interesting right now here 
We'll call it because of the directional correlation inside the market, which is not working today with light speed crude pulling back. And I haven't paid attention to it for about the last uh, two weeks. So uh, I'll spend some time. I'll try to get it done tonight, although that might be difficult. But I will try to get it done and sit and update that just to see where we're at. But uh, regardless of that, what light speed crude has done are very close to have, have been having done. Blah, 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 having done so far today is trading down to a low of 37.91. Now, interestingly enough, the brand new weekly TAS market profile, it's actually got a bearish sentiment. It's got both bearish and bullish. The bullish side is, let me do it this way. It's going to be easier if I do it this way. Let's turn, let's turn this off. Let's actually turn that off. Let's turn this off. Let's turn this off. There we go. We just have market. But when we come to our market profiles, let me first turn the daily off. So when we take a look at this, here's the previous weekly uh, market profile that has been out there. And for uh, uh, I know that John and others were talking about it this morning for quite a long period of time out. Remember, if we take a look at this weekly, I keep pulling it back out here. See how these green lines, this is coming back into uh, May of 2015. See how these profiles continue to form at lower levels. Well, that's what just occurred here, and that's actually more bearish with regard to the direction of price. Now, the uh, the little dash line out here, and that's what we want to pay attention to is the uh, current chart. You can see that the 3776 is that point of control where where buyers and sellers are most comfortable with price. And down below, not too far below, the price point of 3658 is where you've got a level of support. Now, because that point of control is closer to that level of support, more of a uh, bullish connotation. But hey, let's face it, this has been the trademark of light sweet crude as it's moving down. Take a look back here in December 2015. You would say a bullish connotation. Look at this last profile that developed out here. A bullish connotation. Did that stop the slide in light sweet crude, even from the weekly charts? And the answer is no, it didn't. And where did price really run into resistance at the previous market profile? And now that's been adjusted to 41.31. So what is it we should expect? That's uh, what we should expect here. Just looking at the profiles, not anything with regard to price, is that if uh, 37.76, we know it's trading right around there right now, is taken out, expect price to get down to 36.58. Might be a nice trading range from 36.58 to 41.31. Uh, if you go ahead and you close below uh, 36.58, then, you know, you probably then have to go back and take a look at a previous swing point. If we put the price data on here right now, we can see where price has moved back to. Um, and this would suggest to me, more likely than not, uh, that price is probably going to get down and test that uh, 36.58 out here. But with regard to the correlation, directional correlation of the markets and uh, light sweet crude, unless it's come unglued here, um, it's not dancing and celebrating in the uh, streets out here. Uh, and if I take a look at the, uh, go back and add our daily profiles out here, I believe that price is, uh, yeah, what price has done is found resistance, right, at the old daily profile out there of 39.62. So that is your resistance zone. More likely than not, Light Sweet Crude will continue to pull back and give you a piece of information about 36.58. So I hope that that helps to answer your question. There was also another question if I would take a look at the uh, VIX index out here. And if we take a look at the VIX, um, here happens to be, uh, yesterday you and I were taking a look at this. Uh, it's not even a chart. It's just data. It's a wonderful data out there. You can see the VIX is trading out at 14.58. And uh, down about sixty six cents out here. <laughs> uh, the uh, the options traders in December are saying, "Are you guys kidding me?" It's actually up today, thirty six cents. Uh, you're trading at twenty ninety six. If you go take a look at November, you're trading at twenty eighty. You can see this really large contango out here. So what I can tell you is, futures traders, options traders, they are not buying into the punch bowl out here, and this will get resolved. And how is it going to get resolved? Either the futures contracts have got to come back or the cash fix index is going to move higher out there. And as it moves higher, typically, not always, but typically what you will see is uh, some movement south inside of the S&P 500 out there. So that's really what's going on inside of the uh, VIX. I think that covers all of the uh, questions that have come in so far by email. So what else do we want to uh, look at? Um, let's go take a look at some individual stocks and see how they're trading. Let's go see what's behind the move to the south in Chipotle. CMG is a ticker symbol down 18 bucks. What do they have? Do they have another scare out here or something? I don't know. I don't. I don't see it. But what we can uh, tell you about Chipotle out here: volume behind the move. Well, 
I have to turn that on in order to give that to you. So today's volume is uh, 907,000 shares out here. Now, the last time down in this area was with 1.4 million. So it doesn't have a ton of sellers, uh, but uh, you are, if it does close below 459.65 to be exact, then it says you're likely going to head back to the prior swing point area of about 437.14, and that is on Chipotle. CMG. You've got the Dow up 53, S&P's up about 10 points, NASDAQ composite up 55. We'll be right back. If you're looking to discover a new financial resource and diversify your financial portfolio, consider the new Market Safe Commodity Solution CD from Everbank. This five year US dollar denominated CD gives you exposure to eight equally weighted commodities, including WTI crude oil, gold, silver, copper, nickel, soybeans, corn, and sugar, in one powerful CD. With annual pricing caps of 70% per component, you could earn up to 70% upside payment at maturity if the commodities increase in value across annual pricing dates. And should the opposite occur, your principal is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. Don't miss out. Take advantage of this financial resource designed to grow with the times. The April 14th funding deadline is quickly approaching, so hurry over to everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. Once again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a member FDIC. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. It's 2016 and TFNN has a brand new programming lineup to kick things off. Starting January 4th, Swim Lessons by Thinkorswim and TD Ameritrade will be airing five days a week at noon Eastern time. Join hosts Scott Connor, Kevin Hinks, and Cindy Faber as they host their daily options program live at noon five days a week with no commercials for the entire hour. Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark will be moving their program, Living a Primal Lifestyle, to twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 7 a.m. until 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Wake up with Nico and Paige and start your day off right. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour by Nadex will now be live Mondays and Fridays at 10 a.m. Start and end the week with the three hosts, Tom O'Brien, Tommy O'Brien, and Daryl Martin as they break down the world of trading binary options and spreads. For all the details on the new 2016 programming lineup, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 52. S&P is up uh, 10. NASDAQ Composite is up 55. Russell is up 16. Let's go take a look at the, uh, at the Russell 2000. Let's look at the IWM. You've got 24 million shares that have traded hands so far. That would suggest that the IWM is going to do about 33 million shares. So let's go see what it's trading into and just uh, try to benchmark uh, volume out here. So you got to, let's call it a 33 million share day. And last time up here was on the trading session of uh, March 21st, where it did 29 million shares a day before, 36 uh, on March 22nd, about 23. So it looks to me like the IWM is going to try to make a, another run for the, uh, we'll call it the 109.95 level. 
between 109.95 and probably 108.63. It's got some decent volume, and as long as the uh, Qs continue to motor along, volume or not, um, there's no reason for the IWM to not try to do the same out here. Now, if we take a look at A to B equals CD patterns out here inside of IWM, what you're going to see, come on, work with us. Uh, the A to B equals CD looks like this. Uh, it has already done a 1 to 1.272 A to B equals CD, so it probably doesn't really extend much beyond the 108, uh, I'm sorry, the 109.95 level. That's what's going on there. Back to the uh, Qs inside the QQQ series ETF. Here's its uh, 1 to 1 A to B equals CD, which it has completed, completed actually back on March 22nd. You're back, that, that, by the way, had volume of 18 million. You've done 14.4, so it could easily squeak out 21 million shares today. Still lightish type volume, but nonetheless, you close over 108.07. No reason for it to not move to the 110. 63 level out there um what else so let's uh let's take what you know what what, what it's really gonna have to be all about the uh, cues and i don't have i don't believe i do let me see here yeah uh, that's not really the wave count out here let me just uh see if this thing has been moving higher with less relative strength or anything no what's that do that do this do that it's not working uh oh maybe because it's the wrong thing there we go Okay, so it's one heck of a uh, leg off of this uh, low here this morning. So what we can see, interestingly enough, is this morning. How about that? This morning, as price was moving lower, this is at uh, 730. So at 8 o'clock this morning, we had a uh, confirmed uh, price relative strength divergent pattern. Uh, how about that? I did not see that. Uh, now I do. Clearly, and uh, we can see even though that low was uh, tested out there, you know, we know how these call bottoms and these can uh, call tops out here. So it's just a real strong move inside the uh, queues, inside the NQ out here, albeit on light volume. But this market is not going to go south without the uh, NQ, uh, you know, heading south as well. The market's not going to go south. The NQ headed higher, basically, was what I was uh, trying to uh, say out there. If I take a look at the advanced declining issues out here, uh, right now, uh, they're all positive. If I take a look at their oscillator reading, when I say all, I'm referring to New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ Composite, and Dow. In the case of the New York Stock Exchange, the key level today, I believe I have updated the chart. Yeah, the key level today Inside the New York Stock Exchange, going to be 10,132.03. Inside the Wilshire is going to be 20,941. And right now, you've got price trading just slightly above those levels. Uh, that that's going to give you the wider swath of the market, and you close above those numbers. The message is uh, bullish, at least short-term uh, bullish out there. So that's what's going on inside the uh, markets. Of course, it is terrific Tuesday. You know what that means? That means we've got our polar bear. He's going to be up next. That's David White. Stay tuned for that. Then you've got the Tom O'Brien Show from 3 to 5 and Andy Heck to bring it on home. So, uh, folks, have a terrific Tuesday. I'll look forward to seeing you on wonderful Wednesday. Take care, folks. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.